I was diagnosed in November 2010. I knew there was something wrong. I just didn't feel like myself. I had another endoscopy and a colonoscopy and I was told that I had colon cancer. And they told me that it had spread to my lymph nodes and that um, I had 17 more tumors and two of them were also cancerous. When a patient has been diagnosed with colon cancer, particularly when it occurs at an earlier than expected age, the point we have to look for is to see if there is any genetic abnormality that has predisposed this patient to develop this cancer at an early age. The point of detecting a genetic abnormality is to heighten the surveillance so that we are able to pick up carcinomas at an early stage which gives the patient the best chance for cure. What we're looking for when we do immunohistochemistry for these proteins is um, any abnormality of the DNA mismatch repair proteins. Without any BRAF abnormality or BRAF mutation, um, the loss of MLH1 is indicative of Lynch syndrome. That's a hereditary cancer syndrome that is characterized by significantly elevated risks of colon cancer, endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, small bowel cancer, pancreatic cancer, and ureter pelvic cancer. The identification of a genetic abnormality allows us to look at immediate family members and thereby increase their surveillance to match their increased risk of different cancers and early cancers. We are translating what is known at a basic level into actual patient care. About 30% of colorectal cancers have a hereditary basis. About 5% of uh, colorectal cancers are due to Lynch syndrome, an autosomal dominant disorder due to inherited defects in a DNA mismatch repair system. My son was here today to be tested to see if he carried the mutant gene. It's a saliva test. And um, I was told in two to four weeks they will know whether or not they have the gene or mutation, but uh, hopefully they don't. Hopefully it skipped them. Because of this screening program through pathology, we're able to identify families that we might not otherwise identify. In these situations, we can be proactive. We know who's going to be at risk, and it is able to give those parents a peace of mind because we know exactly what we're doing in those situations and we can be proactive instead of sitting and waiting and not knowing. I think this is true patient-oriented pathology approach to things. This means more than just interpreting test results or communicating those test results to the clinician who then communicates it to the patient. We're actually now here involving ourselves with the physicians and sometimes actually with the patient. The value of uh, genetic testing and, and uh, basically discovering if someone has inherited a potential uh, pathogenic mutation lies in the fact that we can, number one, in patients who have not, or family members who have not inherited the mutation, they don't need uh, a strict surveillance or prophylactic measures that, uh, that on the other hand, uh, patients who have inherited the mutation would need. So on the one hand, we can certainly uh, give a peace of mind to uh, all the people who have not inherited the genetic defect. And on the other hand, we can certainly focus on the patients who have inherited the defect so more mortality and morbidity decrease. The best chance for cure of any cancer is early detection. It may help someone else help my sisters and brothers and help my children down the road I know, in the long run, so it has to be done. The program is a rich resource for understanding basic mechanisms in hereditary colon cancer. This knowledge may then lead to the development of specific tailor-made therapies based on molecular alterations in tumors. I think that this program is by itself patient-focused, by, by definition patient-focused, because we are uh, truly doing personalized medicine. I think I'm going to be okay, and if not, then I'll just deal with the next step. So over the last three to five years, there's been a significant transition in our focus in the department and how we're approaching healthcare in, in, in this environment. We've taken a little bit different look at where pathology needs to be in the years ahead and how do we transition so that we start focusing on patients. I think this is the future for pathology that we 
need to be interacting very closely with our colleagues and our researchers. We kind of are an interface between the research and the clinical services and bringing all that together and making it happen.